We are College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Today we're doing continuing our series on casual and complimentary prepping. And we're going to talk about homesteaders, preppers, and the coronavirus. I had uh, misgivings about whether or not to do this video, but I decided to go ahead with it because everybody on the internet is freaking out. Uh, if you go to YouTube, people are going crazy. Uh, common sense should rule the day. So let's talk about uh, this. Uh, it's not called a pandemic yet, but it probably will be. Uh, the Earth's had all kinds of pandemics through the ages. Okay, so this is just the next one to come around. Uh, why is it getting so much attention? Well, when in the history of the world have you saw a country or a government lock down one-tenth of the world's population? Okay, so it's probably a big deal. We wouldn't really know. Uh, the news isn't going to tell us, you're all going to die. They're just not going to do that. So, but it is a worry. Uh, every year, influenza kills a lot of people. We've got used to it. You know, it's on the northern hemisphere in the winter, southern hemisphere in their winter. And it just circles around the planet and keeps coming back. Kills thousands of people every year. Tens of thousands. Uh, so why are they so afraid of this new virus? Well, I have no idea. They know things that we don't know and we will never know. So let's just look at the numbers for a minute. There's 97,878 cases as of today. And today is Thursday March the 6th. Uh, there's 3,353 deaths. 54,122 people have recovered already. Uh, can they get reinfected? Maybe. Maybe not. I, I don't know. And neither does the World Health Organization. And if they don't know, nobody knows. Uh, active cases, there's still about 40,000 403 active cases in the world. Uh, so far, what the virus has showed, now this is all according to the World Health Organization, about 84% of people get a mild to moderate case of the disease. 16% get a severe case of the disease that requires hospitalization. Well now, 16% is a big number, considering our health system operates on a nearly full all the time model a lot like uh, the delivery of food, you know, on time delivery. So our medical system works a lot the same way, at least here in the United States. So that's a big deal. Now the fatality rate, you go on the internet, it's all over the place. According to the World Health Organization, it's probably somewhere between 2.8 and 4.2, which 4.2 for men, 2.8 for women. There's a little difference between men and women and the older you are and the sicker you are you know the worse it's going to be on you well that, the flu takes out old people all the time a common cold takes out old people that's why they've got flu shots and pneumonia shots okay so you can't live your life in fear but we're going to talk about what it is to preppers and homesteaders and what we should do different, if we should do anything different. So let's uh, talk about that just a minute. Just like the little boy who cried wolf, you got to be careful about what information you get off the internet. There's all kinds of people out there that want to scare you for their own purposes. Some people are just bullies. Some people don't know. Some people are just ignorant. Okay. Be careful where you get your information. Uh, if you want to talk about this virus, well, first off, there are some things that, that you ought to know. Viruses are not affected by antibiotics. Viruses are probably not affected by creams, tinctures, and anything like that. 
So take all that with a grain of salt. If somebody's offering you this next great thing, take that with a grain of salt. Pay attention to your preps, what you've got. Uh, Crystal and I, we have our preps. We're ready for pretty much anything, but you never know what this virus is going to bring. Now, you're going to hear a lot of people say, China should have did this or China should have done that. Let me tell you, imagine trying to get 700 million people in the United States, but there isn't, isn't 700 million people in the United States, to be locked down. That was a Herculean effort. It's probably good that uh, this virus started in an authoritarian country. That way they could do those kind of efforts. China has slowed it for the world. We should be thankful that they did that. But like most viruses, you can't hardly contain them. So, and also don't buy into those conspiracy theories out there. Well, this virus was created by this, and this virus was created by that. Don't do that. Uh, will people politicize the virus? Yes. Will they try and take advantage of people using fear of the virus? Yes. Common, everyday horse sense will let you see through that. Don't make that mistake. Now, how do we move forward from here? Well, pay attention to the news, your local news especially. Notice when they're talking about cases locally. That's when you're going to be need to be ready to do what it is you're going to do. Uh, maintain your stocks. Well, here in the United States, gardening season's about to start. I've already planted plants in the basement, so gardening season's here. Have your seeds ready, your fertilizers, those kind of things. Have all that stuff ready and be ready to garden. People are going to do stupid stuff. Number three, people are going to do stupid stuff. Let them get out of their way. You can't tell them. They'll just run over you. You're better off just let people do what they're going to do and get out of their way. Don't let fear, number Four, don't let fear rule your decision making. Common horse sense, a little bit of logic. I'm real mathematically inclined and scientifically inclined, so let a little logic rule what you do. It may be impossible to isolate yourself from everyone. Okay? Now, old retired people, they can isolate pretty good, but they've got children. So, it may be impossible to isolate yourself from everyone. With that in mind, number six, look at your surroundings. Be cognizant of what you touch. And while you're out, don't touch your face. It's real hard for me. You know, I'm all time scratching my nose or scratching my face or rubbing my eyes. I'm all time doing that. But when you're out, don't do it. Keep your hands away from your face at all costs. That will assure, that's even good news, good information for influenza season, cold season. Okay, we're still there. Number seven. A virus is a nanometer in size. Most masks only stop a micrometer. Okay, let me say that again. A virus is a nanometer. That means it is super small. If you compared a nanometer to a, a micrometer, let's say my finger is a nanometer. Well, a micrometer is that big. Okay, most masks stop micrometers. This is a nanometer. Goes right through. So, will masks help? Well, yeah, those viruses could get caught. It's 
they know it's spread by droplets, so those virus, those droplets could get caught. The number one thing a mask is going to do is going to keep you from touching your face. Okay? That's the number one thing a mask is going to do. But it's been my experience that a mask is only as good as the way it fits. Okay? You know, auto body mechanics, those kind of folks that work in paint booths, the medical profession will not let you know that they would make a fit tester to test how well your mask is fitting. So, don't think masks are going to be the end-all, be-all. Uh, will they stop some of the virus that just hits on the mask? And Why, well, sure. But the, probably the number one way a mask will help is to keep you from touching your face and to keep other people from spraying droplets all over the place that are already sick. Okay, let's talk about some common sense things that you can do when you're out and about. Okay, common sense things to th just think about. Uh, in your neck of the woods, if there's a virus is occurring and you have to go out, because I'm going to tell you, most people can't afford not to go to work. All right, most people can't afford not to go to work. Now, some countries are instituting... Uh, sick days that are going to be paid for by the country. So, here in the United States, a lot of folks don't get sick time. As a matter of fact, probably most folks don't get sick time. So, they can't afford not to go to work even if they got the sniffles. They're going to show up. So, just know that that's going to be a thing regardless what happens. It's a thing right now with influenza and that kind of thing. They show up anyway. Uh, municipal systems, water and electric, they're probably not going to be affected by this virus. Don't be afraid. Let me say that again. Don't be afraid. Now, I know some people are going to disagree with me on this. Well, you know what? If you're doing a prepping video and somebody's not disagreeing with you, you're probably not working hard enough. Okay? So, the chances of your municipal systems going down is pretty slim. Uh, number three, mind the government as much as possible. All right? If they want you to be quarantined, do that. It's good for everybody else. Okay? It's good for everybody else. Four, homeopathic remedies are not going to be effective against this virus. I know, I know, you're going to say immune boosters and yada, yada, yada. Well, you know, I've never had the flu because I eat elderberry. Well, eat your elderberry if you want to, but I'm just telling you there's no scientific proof that none of that stuff does boofaloo. So, you do what you want to. Uh, Eating right, exercising, reducing stress on your body, that's probably your best defense against a virus. Uh, be prepared for your schools to be closed, have a plan for that because people get afraid, schools will be shut down. It's already happening in Washington State. It's going to be a thing. Uh, don't be milk and bread crazy. Around here, if it's going to snow, people go crazy to the store. I've got to have milk and I've got to have bread. And I'm going, what are you eating? All right, so don't go milk bread crazy. Uh, martial law. There are not enough troops in the U.S. to declare martial law all over the country. There is not enough. Not even China had that many. Uh, it would take an immeasurable number of troops. And I'm just going to leave it at that. There's not enough National Guard troops in the country to declare martial law. So, don't panic. Check on your neighbors. 
You know, if your neighbors are sick, make them a dinner. Take it to them. Put it on their porch. Call them and let them know, hey, I'm going to bring you over dinner. I'll knock on the door and then you can come out and get it. I'll leave it on the porch. Care about somebody beside yourself some, okay? That's what rural people do. National emergencies, the last common sense thing. National emergencies eventually turn into local emergencies. If you've got your preps in place, then this shouldn't be a major local emergency for you. Alright? This shouldn't be a major local emergency for you. It, it will be an emergency. It will be important. You may have to go to work during it. Alright? But, if your preps are ready, you've got everything that you need, and you've had it for a long time, be calm. A calm level head is your best defense against any emergency. Well, we've discussed all the common sense stuff. What, am, what are we going to do here at College Hill Farm? Well, we have about six months worth of food. We've just finished the winter. We're finishing the winter. We've got about six months worth of food. By the time gardening season is over, we'll have another year's worth of food come August. So, we're pretty much ready for, if there's a three-month shutdown, a six-month shutdown, we're pretty well in, in good shape to handle that. Uh, we're going to pay attention to what the government tells us and take it with a grain of salt. For example, if you think that there are only 98,000 uh, cases worldwide, I've got some swampland in Florida to sell you. Okay, it's not necessarily for everyone that's been confirmed, diagnosed, there are probably 10 or 20. So we're probably talking about millions of people already infected. There's no way to prove that. That's just my common sense guess because here's a little exercise if you want to try that. I'm a physicist, so that means I love math. Here's a little exercise if you want to try it. The Wuhan International Airport, before China let everybody know, this, this contagion was in Wuhan for two months. All right, month and a half, let's say 45 days. Then if we look at that, the Wuhan International Airport, Wuhan's a city bigger than any city in the United States. Let me say that again. Wuhan is a city bigger than any city in the United States. It's bigger than New York. It's bigger than Los Angeles. Okay, it's a huge, huge city. And then there are a couple of other huge, huge cities too that are in this lockdown. But it's a huge city. Has an international airport. 3,000 people a day flew out of that city to all points of the world for 45 days before China told us, the world, that there was a problem. It's really before China knew that there was a problem. So, how many people flew out of Wuhan in 45 days, 3,000 times 45, I'll let you do the math, okay? If only 1% of those had the disease, here's another little exercise for you to try. If you took a penny a day and doubled it every day, which is kind of the way viruses do. You know, if one person infects two, those two infect four, those four infect eight. Okay, it's called exponential growth. Then you look at how many people and how many days, and even if it's 0.1% or 0.01% of the people on those planes, there are a lot of infections around this globe that are undetected. Uh, pay attention to your government. We're going to pay attention to ours and we're going to comply with what they want us to do. Uh, we're going to comply because it's good for the world, it's good for our country, 
Uh, if they say self-isolate, do it. If they say uh, you need to go to the hospital, do it. Hopefully they'll get those drive through quick tests. Uh, we've been a little slow getting the test, but, you know, this is a new virus. New virus takes a new test. So don't buy into a bunch of hype about a lot of stuff. There's going to be all kinds of hype. People who want to profit off of this virus in any number of ways, don't buy it. Uh, will the politicians do what's best for us? No, they'll do what's best for them. You know that, I know it. Don't be fooled. Uh, watch the news. As a matter of fact, for me, I like to watch the news in the United States. I like to watch the news out of Canada, CNBC and, and Global News. I like to watch DW out of Germany, BBC out of the UK, uh, Ararang from South Korea. Get some varied very, and then I watch one from India, but I don't remember what the name of it is. They're all English speaking. Even Al Jazeera out of the Middle East. And I take all of that because every one of those news agencies are owned by a different corporation. And they have a different spin for their own purposes. So that's how I associate my news. And I compile it from all of that. And I use common sense. And I try and decide what makes sense to me and then I go with that uh, I'm not going to tell you what what to do I'm going to tell you to use common sense and to keep moving forward that's what we're going to do uh, I'm going to try my best not to be afraid I'm going to live the best life I possibly can but we're humans we're herds we love who we love. Both my boys, all of my kids, and that includes more than my immediate family, uh, but all of my kids work in jobs that can't be, can't not go. Okay? They all work in jobs that are beneficial to society that can't be abandoned. So possibly they're probably going to get the virus if it comes into our neck of the woods. Hopefully we can contain it. Uh, I don't have much faith in that, but hopefully it can be contained. Uh, so am I going to go and take care of my youngin if they're sick? Yeah. Yeah, if that means I get the virus, well, that's what it means. And the preppers are going to go crazy here, but I love my kids good enough to where I'd lay down my life for them. Hopefully it won't come to that. I pray that the coronavirus is a mild version if I get it. Crystal's the same way. We're going to take care of our kids even if it killed us. So be mindful of those kinds of things. There are just things that are going to come up. Uh, pay attention. Be good to your neighbors. Be good to your family. Take them a meal if they're sick. Do what you can to help anybody. That's what Jesus would do. He wouldn't worry about whether or not uh, it was going to help them, help him. He would worry about whether or not it was going to help them. So think about that. Uh, we're all in this together. I hope you uh, good luck. Uh, and hopefully we can all get through this without too many people getting sick and dying. But, you know, that's, that's what it is. It's called natural selection. All right? It's called natural selection. These viruses come along. We develop an immunity. The virus changes because it naturally selects for the viruses that are more able to infect us. Then we get immunity, and it goes back and forth and back and forth. It's called natural selection. It's a scientific principle that's true. Don't let people who don't believe in science tell you it's not true. It's true. It's scientifically proven. We call it a theory, but a theory that's been around that long is so close to a law that 
there will always be exceptions. There are never exceptions to a law, but there will always be exceptions to a theory, but very few of them. Natural selection is one of those theories that's been around so long with so few exceptions, it's what it is. Now, if you like this kind of stuff, this homesteading, do-it-yourself kind of thing, be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe. We do this homesteading, prepping stuff every week, sometimes one, sometimes five videos. just depends on what's going on in the homestead. If you hit the little bell when you subscribe, it'll notify you when we upload a video. We upload every Sunday. Now, with that being said, it's time for me to get on to the next thing.